you for being here this morning. Our ushers are going to come and we're going to receive our morning offering as we have done in Sunday school, but we'll do that in our worship time this morning. And we uh, thank you for being here, for participating in the service, and for worshiping the Lord today. So let's bow our hearts together. All that's on our prayer list, we've been praying for daily uh, throughout the days of this week. You have a list in the bulletin this morning. And we ask you to pray uh, for these special families, these needs of prayer. And uh, so let's join our hearts. Father, we thank you uh, that uh, when you came into our life, you gave up a promise that there's a better place waiting for us after this life is over. And we thank you, Lord, for the hope we have that it's not in this world, but it is in a better world, a better place. And Lord, this could be the day. This could be that day. And we are here to worship you. And Lord, we know that day is coming very soon when we're going to leave all of this behind. And we're going to be in heaven. We're going to be in the presence of the Lord. 
And there we're going to give you praise and glory forever and forever. Father, we thank you while we're journeying through this world. You've given us a song to sing. You've given us a hope to live for. And Father, we thank you for everything you give to us. We came into this world with nothing. We are going to leave with nothing. And the only thing we have is what you give to us. And so this morning in this hour, we acknowledge your gifts to us. Lord, we have been blessed. All of us that are here this morning have truly been blessed by the hand of the Lord. Now, Father, we come to honor you with our gifts to you. And, Father, we give out of a heart of love, out of a heart of gratitude. We give to you because you've given to us. We love you this morning because you first loved us. Bless this time as we offer this service up to you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen.
you to like that choir singing this morning and these musicians. Amen. Don't you appreciate that? Nah, and I'm just going to tell you, you really got to appreciate that. Amen. He said, I didn't feel anything. Well, get up there and sing with us, and you'll feel a little bit of uh, what's going on up here. Thank you, choir. Thank you for those songs that we sing this morning. And uh, we just don't just j jump up there and do that. It takes a little time of rehearsing and practicing. And so all these folks and the musicians are willing to come at uh, other times and come early and be here and rehearse and practice these songs. Thank you for that. We'll be doing that at 5.30 this afternoon. If you'd like to fill a place in the choir, we'd love for you to come and be a part of that. Our deacons are going to meet at 5.30 this afternoon uh, in the other building. So let me just uh, remind our deacons about that, about a very important meeting at 5.30 this afternoon. Our study and our worship tonight at 6 o'clock. And then our, of course, uh, choir practice again at 6.30 on Wednesday and uh, Bible study at 7. And we have classes for our children and for our youth, and they'd do well. You'd do well to have your young person here and get them involved in these uh, classes designed for them, for them to come together and to be together as young people. So uh, just remind you of that. Uh, we, we just keep that up and, and want you and your family to be a part of that. Let me just read you some cards here this morning. Thank you, cards, to our church family. Thank you for your prayers and support during our time of grief. This is from Jay and Amy and Ben and the family of Julia Goods. Thank you, church family, for praying for them. Uh, then also we have a thank you card to our church on behalf of those who... Uh, um, this is from the McDowell Missions Ministry, <clears throat> and uh, they received a gift from our church for $750, and they sent a thank you card to thank you for the donation uh, that we uh, minister to them and continue to minister to them in the mission that is up there. Our ladies have a ministry uh, from this church, our ladies on missions, and uh, they uh, have uh, a ministry to our shut-ins, not just in this church, but in this county. And uh, when a shut-in has a birthday, uh, then uh, they receive a gift. When they deliver meals on wheels, they also get a gift from the ladies of this church. And uh, one of the ladies sent a thank you card to the church. Uh, thank you, what a wonderful thing you did for me. Uh, you made my day. I thank you so much. And then she said, for all the goodies you sent me. May God bless you and uh, as you do his work at Bethel Baptist Church. Thank you uh, from uh, this lady, Gladys Hall. And she received a gift from the uh, ladies on mission. And uh, she sent a word of thank you. This to the church family. Thank you so much for sponsoring our Walk for Life again this year. Congratulations also for having the biggest team. You had 45 participants that were registered. Uh, God really blessed, and we not only met, but exceeded our goal of $40,000. Your church family is one of our biggest supporters, and we are so thankful you are helping us to help others. God bless you all. And this is from the McDowell Pregnancy Care Center. And thank you for all who uh, participate and all who, uh, whatever you do in these means of reaching out uh, to the needs of people that are all across this county. You don't have to look far. Just open your eyes. Lift up your heads and open your eyes. And there are needy people all around us. And we have the wonderful privilege of participating and reaching out to them in the name of the Lord. And so uh, thank you for your participation every year. And read the other announcements in the bulletin, please, if you will. Don't forget Bible study you put in there, but it's going to be 7 o'clock, not 7.30, uh, this coming Wednesday. If you come at 7.30, you're going to get right in the middle of it, and you're going you're gonna to miss out on part of it. So uh, I encourage you to be here, bring your family, and to be here and to be a part of the service. Thank you for coming this morning, 
and uh, for being here. <clears throat> and some of you are saying, are you going to have enough voice to get through? It'll just get better the more I preach. So I'm just got to, it may take me 30 minutes to get warmed up, and then I'll preach after that. How about that? All right. Uh, we're glad you're here. We're glad to see you. You glad to be up this morning? And for those that are outside, uh, what a day to be out there. Uh, and sun shining on folks that are outside in their car and uh, wherever they are out there. And for those that will listen to this service uh, uh, by this wonderful means of uh, putting it on the Internet and uh, people uh, hear it and they worship with us. I get phone calls from them and I get contact from them. And so uh, we're here and God bless you for being a part of our service this morning. The first thing I want you to do is uh, before you even uh, speak to somebody and uh, our children go to children's worship this morning is uh, put a smile on your face. If you can't get a smile, don't go up to anybody. Please don't. Uh, well, go ahead because they may put one on your face, you know. And so smile at them. Tell them you're glad to see them. You're glad to be alive this morning. And uh, so stand if you will and we'll greet one another and fellowship this morning. Taking our Bibles this morning, Genesis chapter 15, if you will. 
Genesis chapter 15. I think about that song, if the Lord made it, it's got to be good. I said, he don't make junk, so I'm just going to tell you, <laughs> look around. Uh, he don't make any junk. <laughs> if the Lord made it, it is a good day. It is a good thing. Genesis chapter 15, Do you are you aware? We're sort of studying some of the details in the life of Abraham. He is the only man in the Bible. Three times he is called the friend of God. Nobody else in the scripture has that title. He was the friend of God. Abraham was not a perfect man. But he was a man of faith. Do you know you don't have to be perfect to have faith in God? <laughs> if you had to be perfect, that would disqualify every one of us. <laughs> but we have a perfect God <laughs> where our faith is anchored in. And Abraham was like a lot of us. He had good days and he had bad days. He had good times and he had bad times. But one thing that did not change was his faith was anchored in God. And when you come to chapter 15 of the book of Genesis, what God wanted for Abraham was different than what Abraham wanted from God. That, that does happen. <laughs> we want one thing, but God may have something totally different in mind. When God came to Abraham originally, he said to him, I will be your helper, I will reward you. And Abraham turned around to God and said, All right, if you're going to reward me, I want a son. Keep in mind, he was 75 years of age when he said that. <laughs> and his wife was about 10 years younger. And he said, this is what I want. I want a son. But God said to him, my plans for you is far greater than just a child. And here's what he said to Abraham in these opening verses. After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. And then Abram said, Lord God, what wilt thou give me? Does that sound like any of us? God said, this is who I am, and we turn around to God and say, well, what are you going to give me for that? I want you to give me something. And first thing he said, seeing I go childish, and this steward of my home is this Eleazar of Damascus. I have one in my house, but he's really not my son. And Abram said, Behold to me, thou hast given no seed, and lo, one born in my house is mine heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, this shall not be thine heir, but he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thine heir. And he brought him forth abroad and said, Look now toward heaven. Tell the stars if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, So shall thy seed be. This is one of the great statements in the book of Genesis. And he, talking about Abraham, believed in the Lord. 
And he, God, counted it to him for righteousness. Abraham believed God, and God put it on his account. Abraham's account was like all of our account, not worth much. You start adding up what all we are and all that we have, and it doesn't add up to much. But when Abraham believed in God, God took his righteousness and put it on the account of Abraham. And uh, this is the first time this is mentioned in the Bible. Three times, three words that are mentioned in this text that God gave to Abram. The first one is the word believe. The Bible said, and he believed in God. Well, you'll never know God until you believe in him. Uh, and Abraham put his faith in God. He believed in God, what God said. In this building and wherever you are this morning, they're just believers and unbelievers. Uh, you're either a believer this morning or you are an unbeliever. Abraham believed in God. The Lord, the second word, and he counted, or he credited it to him. Uh, when you look at Abraham, Abraham had nothing on his credit sheet. He had nothing to give to God. But God said, if you believe in me, I'll take my righteousness and I'll put it on your account. And when God sees you, He really will not see you, but He will see the righteousness that I have given unto you. If you're a believer this morning, that's exactly what happened when you put your faith and trust in God. You had nothing, I had nothing to give to Him. I had nothing to offer to God. And God had everything to give to me. And God took his perfect righteousness and looked at me, and when I believed in him, he took all of his righteousness and put it on my account. And when I stand before God, I don't stand in my righteousness, but I stand in the righteousness that he has given unto me. And so the scripture said that God did that when he counted it to him. His faith, he counted it unto him as righteous. You know, this is the first time this word is mentioned in your Bible. This was the first time where a man was standing before God and understood that he was not righteous and the only way he could be righteous is to be clothed in the righteousness of God. And that's how he came to meet the Lord. And so every human being, every human being, the only way we'll ever be made right, a part of that word righteousness, is to be right with God. And the only, only way that anybody will ever be right with God is to have the righteousness of Jesus Christ on his account. And so here he is, this man. The Bible said in that verse that he believed in the Lord. This morning you're a believer or you're not a believer? You're saved or you're not saved? There's no in-between. Abraham believed in God. He believed in the Lord. And because of that faith in God, God took it and counted it as righteousness unto Abraham. 
So I, I want to I wanna take this chapter today and uh, just talk about the human side of our salvation and the divine side of our salvation. How are we made right with God? People try a lot of things, try to be right with God. But I'm here to tell you on the authority of this word, there is only one way to be right with God. They're not a Baptist way and a Methodist way and some other church's way. In fact, righteousness did not begin with us. It began with the righteous God. And God said this, if you want to be right with me, this is how a man is right with God. And so here's the human side of being right with God. It's found in that opening statement of that verse 6, and he believed in the Lord. Faith is the human side of our salvation. Abram, you remember where God found him? He's down in an idolatrous nation, living in the Ur of the Chaldees. All indication was that Abram, along with his family, were idol worshipers. They made idols and they worshiped idols. And uh, the word of God came to him. And he heard about how you can be right with God. And Abram got up out of the earth of the Chaldees and he started his journey toward God and uh, God revealed himself time and time again uh, on his journey to the Lord. Uh, could I just add this this morning? Uh, you'll never get saved until God reveals himself to you. Uh, you don't find God on your own. Uh, I'll tell you, uh, you say, well, I found the Lord. Can I remind you this morning, first of all, the Lord wasn't lost anywhere. And secondly, secondly, uh, when I found him, I discovered that he is looking for me a whole lot longer than I'd been looking for him. If you're here this morning and you're lost, can I tell you, he's looking for you. And you may not come looking for him, but he's looking for you. And, and in this in this. Uh, in this episode of Abraham, Abraham believed God. Can I say a couple of things about faith this morning so we could understand what really faith is? Number one, faith and our salvation has nothing to do with religion this morning. It's not a religious thing. We're told that all through the Bible. Religious people can be lost. Religion does not save anybody. Uh, there were, there are a lot of people say, especially in the days of Abraham, a lot of religious people, and they were requiring a lot of stuff in order for a man to be right with God but the Lord revealed Abraham, do you know being in a relationship with me doesn't have a thing to do whether you're religious or whether you are not religious. It is a relationship with God. It is not some kind of outward religion that we have. Uh, if you've got religion this morning and that's all you have, could I just suggest you better get rid of that religion and get in a relationship with God himself. Faith, you cannot put religion in there with faith because our faith is not in a religion. Our faith is in a person and that person he is the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm so glad the day that opened my heart and let him come to my life. I got more than some religion. I'll tell you, I got some more than some requirement of some church. I found there was a person that loved me and died for me, and I came into a relationship with Jesus Christ, the person that saved me. Our salvation, our faith, 
is not a religion. Our faith is not on the works of the law. Not anything I do. Not anything that I've done. Because I'm here to tell you this morning that you'll never ever do enough. You'll never measure up. You'll never accomplish what it takes for a man to be saved by the grace of God. I'll tell you, you can do and do and do. Somebody said, you can work your fingers to the bones and all you'll ever get is bony fingers out of it. You won't get anything else out of it. Abraham had to learn that this relationship with God, this righteousness from God had nothing to do with what he is doing. Had nothing to do with what he could do. Salvation, hear me this morning, is of the Lord and not from man. Can I illustrate in this story about Abraham? When God came to Abraham, what God did was beyond what Abraham could do. Got your Bibles open? Read with me, if you will. Verse 8. Abraham's talking. He said, Lord God, whereby shall I know that I shall inherit it? Anybody here this morning say, how am I going to know whether I'm saved or not? How can I know? Well, Here's what God said for him to do. Take me a heifer of three years old and a she-goat of three years old and a ram of three years old and a turtle dove and a young pigeon. And he took unto him all these, divided them in the mist, laid each piece once, one against another, but the birds divided he not. And when the fowls came down upon the carcasses, Abram drove them away. And when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram. I read that, I say he must have been a Baptist. Uh, do I need to say that again? Here God, God working and God doing something and Abraham falls asleep while God is doing, working out this plan of salvation. And a deep sleep fell upon Abram and a horror, great darkness fell upon him. And he said unto Abram, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs and shall serve them. They shall afflict them 400 years. Here's God telling me, all these things are going to happen. This is what you and your people are going to have to go through. I wonder if God revealed to you at the very outset, here's everything you're going to face in your life. I wonder how many of us would be willing to go with God. I doubt many of us would. He said, let me tell you what's going to happen to you, Abraham. If you anchor your faith in me, your children are going to be like strangers in a land that is not theirs. By the way, could I tell you, we are pilgrims and strangers in this world. And shall serve them, and they shall afflict them 400 years. Also that nation whom they shall serve, God said, don't you worry about it. I will judge them. And afterwards shall they come out with great substance. And thou shalt go to thy fathers in peace. Already told him how he's going to die. You shall go to your fathers in peace. And thou shalt be buried in a good old age, Abraham. But in the fourth generation they shall come hither again. For the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. Here God preaching a little sermon to Abraham and giving him this great revelation of what his life is going to be like from beginning to the end and all of his descendants. And it came to pass that when the sun went down and it was dark, behold, a smoking furnace and a burning lamp that passed between those pieces. 
You know what's going on while God's talking? Abraham was over there sleeping. And in that same day, the Lord made a covenant with Abraham. And he said, Unto thy seed have I given this land from the river of Egypt unto the great river, the river Euphrates. Let me tell you what the custom was. Two people enter into a covenant relationship. They take animals. They slay those animals. They separate them and they take the blood and sprinkle the blood all around. And uh, they cut those animals into two sides. And uh, if two people, boy, and it's different signing a contract in our day. Now, if you sign a contract in our day, you better believe they're after blood. I'm just going to tell you that they are after blood. <laughs> and here's Abe. God said, we're going to walk in the midst of this. And I make a covenant to you, and you make a covenant to me. And this covenant is bound by blood. We make a promise to one another. So when God got the sacrifice ready, he looks over and Abraham is asleep. So the scripture tells us in the New Testament, that when God couldn't find anybody greater, he made the promise to himself. And God said, I make a covenant with me. Now when a man and another man made a covenant, if one of them broke the promise, the covenant was null and void. But God said, I'm making myself a promise. Abraham, you just stay on the sideline and I'll handle this. And when God could not find anybody greater than himself, he walks through that mist of those animals that were slain and the blood that was shed and makes a covenant with man that if you believe in me, you are made righteous and it has nothing to do with you but everything with me. I'm just going to stand right here this morning and tell you my salvation and my hope of heaven has nothing to do with me but everything to do with God. You know why? Because God made a promise to himself. He couldn't depend on anybody else. So he said, I'll just make a promise to myself and I'll enter into a covenant with myself and doesn't have a thing to do with you. I'll do it. Well, Abraham was asleep. While God was doing all of this work of bringing man into a right relationship with God. God knew Abraham was a man he would fail. But the promise of God is not based on me nor you this morning. If your salvation depended on you this morning, I wonder how many is coming to church and saying, Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. You know the reason I can say that is because it's all based upon Him. Not what I do, but what He has done. Abraham would fail. But God would not fail. And do you know I'm not keeping him, but he is keeping me this morning. I anchored my faith in him, and it has nothing to do with any kind of religious church I belong to, any kind of religion I may be a part of. It has nothing to do with any kind of works that I have done. This part, man's part of salvation, I want to tell you, if God had lifted up to man, I'll tell you, we'd have messed it up a long time ago. And some folks, I know, I'm trying, I'm trying to work this thing out. Why don't you just give up? Jesus is already, when Jesus died on the cross, he said it is finished. Everything's been done. I'm 
talking about righteousness. Man's side is a gift from God. Does not come from religion. Does not come from anything you do. Could I tell you thirdly, you don't have to be perfect to receive this salvation. It doesn't come on the basis of your perfection. It comes by faith in a perfect God. I am not perfect. I thought we might have a few amens when I said that. I'll talk to you when service is over. <laughs> and by the way, has anybody told you lately, as your wife ever told you, you're not perfect. I just want you to know. You men are too afraid to say amen when I ask that. None of us, there's none righteous. Tell you, the issue is so many of us are spending all of our time spending uh, looking at our faith rather than the object of our faith. You know what the object of our faith? Do you know your faith will never be perfect in this life because you're not perfect and you're a human being? But brother, the object of my faith is anchored in a perfect person who has always been perfect, who will always be perfect. I have a perfect salvation because I have a perfect Savior this morning. Faith does not have to be perfect. When it said Abraham believed God, after this, it says the Lord came to Abraham. It's quite obvious. Abraham didn't understand everything God said. God said, I'm going to give you something eternal. All Abraham's talking about, could you give me a boy? Could you give me an heir? Faith that leans on a perfect person. Could I ask you this morning, what are you leaning on? Well, this preacher this week, it hasn't been very good. Hopefully it'll be better next week. Could I tell you, Jesus is good all the time. And Jesus is perfect every day. All the time, every day. There are no faults in him. How do I know I'm going to heaven? It's because of him. It's all because of him. One of our great missionaries was on a foreign soil and he was out among the people that could not speak very well. They had a language, but they didn't have a very good language. A lot of things, a lot of words they did not understand. When he talked to them, they would they'd say, I don't understand that word. So he spent his time writing down in a little notebook the words they could not understand. He said they'll never, never know what to do until they understand what I'm saying. And so he wrote down the words. His goal was to translate the Bible into their language. He wanted to take portion of the scripture and translate it in their language so they could read it. They could understand it so they could believe and they could be saved. And when he got to talking to them, there's one word that they, they did not understand it was the word faith. And he searched and he searched, tried to find the meaning, a word that he could translate. What does that word faith or believe, what does it mean? He took some of those men one day. They were out hunting and they killed several animals, several large animals, and they tied them up between two poles and they started on their way back to their missionary home. Uh, hot, tremendous burden, carrying those animals that was going to be their meat to eat. They walked for miles carrying those animals. When they finally got 
to their dwelling place. They threw their burden down on the ground. And they went up on the porch and they just sort of collapsed and stretched themselves out, exhausted. And one of them said, oh, it's so wonderful to finally lay down and rest from my labor. This missionary, God spoke to his heart. He said, do you know what that is? That's faith. Do you know what that is? And he quickly wrote it down. He went to these men. And he said, outside of Christ, you're traveling through this world with a heavy load. You almost get to the point of exhaustion. But when you get to the place that you cannot carry that load any further, you lay it down. And you rest with all you have on Christ. You know every person's carrying a load of guilt and a load of sin and it'll wear you down. And when you can't get any further, if you'll lay them down at the foot of Jesus, exhausted, you cannot do a thing but lay that burden down at his feet. That's where he'll find you. When you have nothing else to give and you say he's the only Savior and I am not. I'm here this morning because he is the Savior and I put my faith in him and him alone for no other one saves but him. And I'm speaking to people this morning that are carrying, still carrying their heavy load. Your part of salvation is to believe, to trust, not in yourself, not in man. There's only one Savior, and that's Jesus. He said, if you come to me and believe, if thou will believe, you can be saved. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Abraham believed in the Lord. And when God saw that, he said, I'm going to take my righteousness and give it to an unrighteous man who has nothing. Nothing. You say Abraham is a good man. Oh, that wasn't good enough. He took all of his righteousness and put it on a man that was totally unrighteous. And God counted. Can I tell you this morning, aren't you glad God knows how to count? He doesn't count like we do. I know some folks, I know some, well, I got to count in. I know how to count. I know how bad they are. Well, just keep on keeping your record all you want to. I don't have to stand before you one day. I stand before God who knows how to count. Well, I don't make you too happy, but that makes me happy. <laughs> that I got God counting for me, and he takes all of his righteousness, and he said, I'm going to make this man that don't have any, and I'm going to count it. I'm going to add it up on his ledger. And when he stand before me, he's righteous. He's righteous. He said, I don't feel right. Ain't got a thing to do with your feeling. Man's side. Lord willing, tonight I'm going to talk about God's side of this matter. What God does. What God does when you believe. I'm telling you, it, it is unbelievable what God does for us. I'm here this morning because of what God has done for me. 
And I'm here to tell you what he did for me, he'll do for you. He'll do for you to be made right with God. That's the question. Will you bow your heads just a moment this morning? Heads are bowed. The issue is, are you right with God? Well, how do you get right? God makes you right. You can't make yourself right. But God will make yourself, make you right. Well, how does he do that? By faith. By faith, God makes us right. Maybe you put your faith in a church. Maybe you put your faith in a preacher, in a man. You put your faith in some other object. You put your faith in yourself. Well, I will assure you every one of them will fail you sometime or another. Every one of them will come up short of what you need. But only Jesus, the perfect, righteous one, it's what you need. Could I present him to you this morning and tell you that he'll make you right by putting your faith in him. Now, Father, we try to share a few thoughts out of this verse. Everything that you did for Abraham and what you do for others, you'll do for us. Lord, if there's some heart this morning, maybe some burdened soul this morning, they're carrying that heavy load and they think if I can, if I can just do this or do that, I'll be right with God. Help them to come and fall down at the foot of the cross and say, Lord, in my hand, nothing I bring. I don't bring anything. I don't bring myself. don't bring my church membership. I don't bring religion. I don't bring my works. I just cling by faith to Jesus and put my trust in him. Help us this morning to honor you in Jesus' name, amen. Will you stand with me, please? We'll sing together. Would you listen to the Holy Spirit and would you respond to him as he would draw you to himself? Now, do we hear those words, have faith where? Have faith in myself, faith in somebody, faith in, in man. I will tell you, you'll fall, you'll come up short somewhere along the way. They'll disappoint you, they'll let you down. He will never fail, he will never let you down. If you'll anchor your faith in him, in him this morning. That's, that's all I have to present to you, is the perfect son of God. He's still on the throne. He watches over his own. He will not fail. He cannot fail. And in the end, he will prevail. Why wouldn't we want to put our faith in him? Some of you this morning struggling. You're trying to make it on your own. God said, well, I'm here. I'm here. Why would you try to carry that by yourself? Why would you try to do that by yourself? I'll help you. I'll bear your burden. I'll be with you. I'll never forsake you. I'll never leave you. Why would you try to do that on your own when you've got me? My challenge this morning, would you exercise your faith in him this morning while we say, I'll faith in God.
verse says, without faith it is impossible to please him. I wonder how many of his children are trying to struggle through every day. Just trying to make it on their own. You're exhausted emotionally, spiritually. Faith is when you collapse down at his feet and said, Lord, I can't, but you can. I've got faith in God. Faith in Him. The purpose of this service today is anchor your faith in Him. Stir up your faith in Him. Believe Him. We don't, we don't act like people that don't believe. I mean, we don't. We face the same problems they do. Sometimes we act like we ain't got a bit of faith. Faith in God. Say, well, preacher this, preacher this, preacher this. But faith in God. <laughs> you ain't looking the same person I'm looking at. <laughs> Some of you are so dwell on your problems. <laughs> you live every, every day just dwelling on problems. Could I encourage you to get your eyes on the problem solver? <laughs> the one who can solve. Do you think anything's ever happened he can't solve? Do you think anything too hard for him to do? Oh, no. Too hard for me, but it's not too hard for him. So I'm just going to anchor in him. Thank God. Faith, that's our side. Believe in God. Believe in him. God's got a side to this thing. God does some things I can't do. The human side is faith. God's got a side to this thing that I cannot do. But my faith is anchored in what he does. And all that he does. Amen. Lift up your head this morning. Don't go out of here looking down. I mean, lift up your head. Amen. I'm going to get my amen fellow right on the front pew. He's going to amen me. <laughs> amen. All right, smile at somebody. They're going to play. They, they're, they're, here we go.